From Viking halls to the cities of the future, Terrain Buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastofwar.com. High Octane Anime Action is the name of the game in Relic Knights. Mount up in your mecha and battle for glory at our Relic Knights Hub on beastofwar.com. Hi everybody, I have been joined by Rich from Warlord Games and today we are going to unbox Blood Red Skies. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is the new game that you guys are bringing out from Warlord Games. Yes, it is, yeah. And uh, I'm excited. Absolutely, we're very proud of this one. Yeah. Yeah, the, this has uh, come from many years of uh, hard labour on Andy Chambers' part. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we've got some fantastic guys on board to do the designs and it's got a, a very nice look. Yeah, it's it's got a classy look. Let me let me quickly show everybody the box here. The artwork on the front of this is quite simply gorgeous. And then what you're actually getting in the box, it shows you on the back, is you've got six aside for Mr. Smiths and Spitfires. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. So, where was the genesis of this game? Well, we're talking um, seven or eight years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Andy Chambers, uh, whose grandfather was in the RAF. Mm -hmm. uh, inspired him and he he loves that genre of uh mm -hmm. the the world war ii aircraft and just wanted a simple game to play mm -hmm. uh something that was elegant yes and could simulate you as an ace yes. flying under the same pressures as a pilot might have been at the time yeah i have watched quite a few documentaries on just what the pilots went through i mean like it was it was kind of crazy what was asked of them yes yeah i mean just a, in a few days alone in battle of britain you're looking at going up and operating um five six missions in the yeah. space of hours you know up uh, attack the enemy get back down refuel yeah. go again yeah um literally pilots were flying asleep almost <laughs> uh, it's it's amazing how they maintained their uh their, their uh, ability to fly Mm. let alone uh, sort of engage with an enemy. See, I'm not so worried about the flying part. It's, it's normally the landing part that catches yeah. you out. Yeah, and a lot of people did, yeah, especially with the Spitfire being so uh, nose heavy almost. The, yeah. the uh, yeah, landing, that was a, a skill. Yeah, and generally you were landing on a full airstrip. You were landing in a field. And often the field had been bombed initially. Yeah, yeah. so they were losing their strips quite frequently. Yeah. To be yeah. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at uh, the top layer of the box. So uh, we've got the rules booklet. Yeah. Very light and thin. You're going to be able to work through this pretty quick and get yourself up and playing. We've then got uh, scenarios. So many scenarios in the game. Yeah, you've got uh, your typical sort of uh, introductory scenarios. So you're engaging in a uh, sort of chase down the intruder flight. Mm -hmm. um, a typical reconnaissance aircraft flying through, uh, and you're trying to chase them down all the way up to your normal meet, uh, mm -hmm. just into a, a big swarm fight. Or escorting bombers. Ah, I see. We then have expanded rules. So I assume this is after you get your initial games down. That's right. There's, start there's, special stuff there's in. another level uh, mm -hmm. to the game. Once you've actually been playing a couple of games, you'll you'll have it down the basic rules really well, mm -hmm. uh, and then trying to learn the little uh, intricacies of flying an aircraft and uh, trying to uh, see how the traits for the national uh, different aircraft types mm -hmm. work. Uh, but then you bring in the cards, the yeah. trait cards, and that's when you start adding that flavor mm. specific to a nation mm. see I, I like games that do that they actually get you in and get those main mechanics built into you because yep. I, I always think you, you have to have a certain thought process for each and every game you play that's what I've discovered over the years uh, so moving further down we then have our is skills deck and uh, is there anything else in yeah, here or is yeah. it all skills yeah there's a, a variety of skills so you've got things like theater cards mm -hmm. ace cards your doctrine cards mm -hmm. and of course your particular aircraft traits mm. as well will appear in there okay uh, we then have baggy with all of our handy dandy bases which you guys have designed up flying stands now this is one of the big mechanics which we look at for sure yeah well if if i bring this up close i'll let you actually see so you look at this and you think, okay, this is your usual little flight stand. No, it pops and tilts to actually show your status in the game, which okay. is very, very odd. So when, like, when, you're, when your plane's actually on, you get this. So whenever you're tilted forward, you're at disadvantage. When you're in the middle, you're neutral. And whenever you're back, you're advantage. Yeah, so rather than um, uh, trying to uh, show what height you're at or mm. uh, what your, your actions are actually going to be, like mm. uh, looking at the detail of uh, an Immelman turn or something like that. Yeah. You're actually flying at a state 
uh, of either advantage, mm. a generic generic neutral state, mm. or you're at a disadvantage. Yes. So generally, a uh, pilot is always looking to gain the advantage over an opponent. Mm -hmm. So these bases essentially show that for us yeah. on the game. Yeah, and it's it's a nice idea that instead of actually showing your elevation levels or anything like that, yeah. this actually shows like the the physical mental state of the plane. Has someone actually managed to to curl in behind you on the perfect line? Yeah. Are you that guy who's coming in on the perfect line, feeling Absolutely. really confident? And yes, I've got yeah. the kill. It's coming toward me. Absolutely, and it also means that the moment that you actually activate your aircraft is going to be potentially different every turn. Mm -hmm. So you're not necessarily going to be going first always with an ace. Yeah, uh, that, so. and you can really play with the the tactical priority of yes. stuff by actually yeah. changing their condition. Yeah. if they haven't activated yeah. yet, or even doing it afterwards for their activation next turn. That's right. Yeah. Okay, next thing we get is, okay. of course, our bag of dice. Now, of course, everybody likes a bit of a tally to yep. chart up how many kills they make. However, in the game, once you've got the setup out of the way, you're really just looking out for the six. And we, so, love, a, we love a symbol on the six. This? That's the one. And you've got the basic ace in there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, your ace needs to get an ace. Yes, right. right. Got to get your aces. Now, of course, this is designed to play straight out of the box. And mm -hmm. one of the cool things here is that you don't need to paint an aircraft. You can literally pop it out from its holder, mm. pop it on its base, and add a sticker to show yeah. who you are. Now, are these stickers or are they transfers? They're stickers. They're stickers. Yeah. So you get two little sheets of these, one for the, the Brits, one for the Germans. Absolutely. And I like having a little touch like that, that it just makes it a little bit simpler for you. Yeah, anybody can pick this up and go and yeah. be an A, get out there and learn what it was to be like an ace. All right, we then have some of our cards here. Okay, oh, so the first two cards, if you look at the top ones, yep. um, you're looking at uh, the basic aircraft cards. So, so we've got a Spitfire Mark II, single engine fighter, and what are the stats meaning here? The first one? Yes, the first one is your firepower. Mm -hmm. That's the general sort of amount of lead you can put up into the into the sky there. Mm -hmm. We then have? Your agility. Ah, okay. How, how manoeuvrable that particular aircraft was in comparison to others, mm -hmm. and not the, last the pilot. One. Well, I hasten to add that's not the pilot's agility. That is about the aircraft itself. Ah, uh, okay. And then the last one? Yeah, that's your speed of the aircraft. Okay, uh, now you notice there's a very small number, very yeah, just right, right underneath. underneath. So sometimes in the game, you're going to find that you're trying to work out who gets to go. Mm -hmm. When you're both aircraft are of a similar um, pilot skill, mm -hmm. but also a similar speed, mm -hmm. you then look at the actual aircraft speed from the period. Ah, and if that aircraft was faster, then so, it gains the advantage so to go in terms two. of going first or second. Oh, it's tight between these two. So, so the card underneath is the Messerschmitt, and you can see it's just a few miles an hour less than the Spitfire. Yeah, uh, three miles an hour slower. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, but we see actually it's got uh, very, some very extra traits here as well. Yeah, now that's where you can ignore these for a basic getting into games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you don't have to play it, but then. Part of what you'll want to do is expand into those cards. Of these will come back to the uh, deck of cards that we were showing earlier. Mm -hmm. And if you've got particular traits, mm -hmm. that is where the national traits for that particular aircraft come in. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a Messerschmitt mm -hmm. could outdive a Spitfire mm -hmm. or a Hurricane, um, whereas the Spitfire Hurricane could outturn mm -hmm. a uh, Messerschmitt. So, you'll find tactics like turning into the enemy. Uh, you want to be using that tight turn for the Spitfire mm -hmm. card uh, to try and manoeuvre in behind the uh, Messerschmitt, but if that happens, the Messerschmitt's going to be able to use his dive away ability mm -hmm. uh, to escape that trap, yeah. potentially. Uh, so. Yeah, and because the, the Spitfire is just that little bit faster, it can get into trouble and get out of trouble just that smidge quicker. Potentially, yeah, which, which means, quite good. yeah. But the other one there you notice on the... Messerschmitt is it has a second one. Uh, yes, if I bring so, this up. So it's got great dive and great climb. Yeah. So some of those traits will activate to help the aircraft with its movement. Mm -hmm. Some might there to interact and deny your enemy mm -hmm. an action. Ah. Yeah. So for example, great climb, if you play that during the game, it might force me to, if I'm trying to climb for advantage, normally I'd do that automatically yeah. in my pilot action, but you're now forcing me to test on a dice roll I to see. see if I can do that rather than just getting it automatically. Yeah, so my pilot has seen you go for the climb and he's trying he's, to outclimb he's you. basically trying to outclimb me at the same time mm -hmm. and keep the advantage or maintain I the see. level of advantage between you. I see. Now we have another card here. I assume ah, this is yes. not in the set. Is this a bonus? It's a bonus, yes. Okay. Uh, the You won't get an aircraft, but you, you do get a printed card version, which we'll see when we look at the cards, mm -hmm. 
um, of the DO17, Dornier, mm -hmm. um, bomber. And if you were to reverse that card, flip it over, you have the Blenheim. Ah. So one of the scenarios, you fly with three bombers, mm -hmm. and obviously you want to be able to take it in turns trying the scenario out. Mm -hmm. So you get both aircraft. That's nice. Okay, uh, let's start having a look at some of the minis. So we'll if come you back. want to pop these out. Yeah, so pop out the actual aircraft. Yeah, and I've got so, two of the bases sitting yeah. ready to accept. So if them. I just pop out a Spitfire and a Messerschmitt. Yes. So uh, pass you over both of those. Yeah, so these literally just pop Yeah, they've got a triangle the... on the centre of the base. Yeah, so if I can... There we go. Yeah. Oh, those are actually quite snug. Yep. Yeah. Which, okay, this is something I really, really like because... I have a bit of a bugbear about some of these flight stand games where you'll pick the thing up and the plane will literally just fall yeah, off. So that's absolutely. a really snug fit. So we've got our, our Spitfire done in brown. Yep. Looking really, really nice. We can get a good close up on that. There's some lovely detail yeah, in there. Yeah, if you look across the, the wings there. I think the, you'll see when we look at the painted aircraft a little bit later, mm. uh, the detail's just enough that you can have a real good extra little bit of detail added yeah. with maybe oils i think uh, john's looking at pinching a set to paint up so now i do like that these are actually single piece miniatures as well so that you have no building you pop them out of the box you put them on the flight stand and off you go absolutely uh it's as i said the the game is set up to be played out of the box mm -hmm. um but of course we want to paint them yeah, of, course, uh, of course as gamers do yeah and, and like you said john's just sitting there going Oh. He's dribbling about doing that extra detail with a bit of um, oil painting, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, I've got a couple that Derek has painted for us. Oh, okay. I'll uh, pop, so I'll pop the, look at here? the base ones out of the way. I might just bring out these two because they're very special colours. What did, okay, this yeah. is different. Okay, let's pop the first one in. So we have a, a Spitfire done in <laughs> shocking pink. In a shocking pink. Isn't that great? Is this historical? That's absolutely historical. Uh, if you look just behind the pilot's canopy there. on uh, Just here? Uh, yep. Uh, but on the opposite side there, you've got a disc above the Randall. Uh-huh. That's a camera. Oh, I see. I understand now. So in the intruder flight, you have a single Spitfire, which is met, doing a reconnaissance run. Yeah. Trying to basically uh, get details back to base and to uh, Inceptors trying to take it out. I see. And why not have a pink Spitfire? It was real. They looked at flying it and different colour schemes for... Mm that time of day, so the, the dawn dusk period where they're I flying see. through that sunlight and uh, they British figured that was the colour, it's why you see the Pink Panther in the desert and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> well it's, it's the strangest uh, camo scheme, I'm sure I've mentioned it before on camera, uh, was actually a tiger done in black and white camouflage, so like yes. uh, spots, yeah. Yeah. and apparently there's a picture of this thing sitting under a tree and you can barely see it. Yeah. Okay, and then this other one, who and is that, this? Let's say um, it could be uh, any particular ace or uh, a different Yaga, yeah, Yaga, Yaga, squadron. <laughs> yeah, the uh, German um, equivalent of a, a Spitfire intercept squadron. Yeah. And uh, they have a, a good variety of markings. So the, the white tips would denote which unit he belonged to. Mm. A yellow 15 would be something like the third group. Mm -hmm. uh, like yeah, well, I mean, like, whenever I think of uh, the, the Messerschmitt, I always think of it with the yellow tips. Yes, yeah, it's, it's that very classic iconic, classic book. iconic one. So, and we do have a couple more here. Okay, this have one. Now these ones we've added in the pilot skill discs. Ah, so this disc pops into the bottom then. Yeah. So before so, you pop your aircraft on, you just pop the card disc yeah. over the top of the stem, and it has either uh, two, three, four, five mm -hmm. as the pilot skill. Two being a rookie, yeah. five being an ace. Yeah. So we've got a an experienced pilot and a quite experienced pilot here. Yeah. And these, ah, oh, I love being able to do that. I could sit and play doing that all day. Yeah. And then I assume you have the, the quadrants marked out on the base to actually show firing arcs? Yeah, or where so you've got your, your arcs. So when you're being shot at, you know whether you're being uh, shot with a deflection shot mm -hmm. or a you've got a nice bead on their front arc or rear arc. Yeah. yeah, there's a little little arrow right at the very front of your base there. Yes. Now, if you can get into a position where you're directly pointing that arrow at my stem, so if but, I was like, but through the rear arc, so if I was like this, so yeah. the Spitfire has advantage. I'm on even. What would happen yeah. here? Now, in the game terms, the mechanics wise, mm -hmm. the Messerschmitt would not be allowed generally to shoot at you because he's not at a higher advantage level. Yes. However, because he has got himself into a position tailing you with yeah. the little arrow pointing right at the stem uh -huh. 
the Spitfire would go immediately from advantage to disadvantage, ah, straight so, down. So this would happen. Yeah, which allows you then to crack off your shots yeah. at the Spitfire, and potentially if you hit him, the and he fails the uh, agility roll to avoid being shot down, mm. uh, he would lose a, a an advantage level. Uh -huh. In this case, it's a crash because, of course, he's at the lowest level. Uh, so we go advantage, normal, New disadvantage, crash. crash. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shot down. Yeah. <laughs> nice and easy. So yeah, it's yeah. a way of taking a, a, another aircraft from a high advantage level yeah. down to disadvantage in one go. Yeah. The, on their tail. There is quite a bit of uh, resource and action management from what I've seen for the mechanics of this game. Actually, seen... getting yourself into a good advantage yeah. position. It might, it might take a bit of jiggling and pokery to get in behind someone. Yeah. Uh, and if you can it. work together with a wingman, it yeah. can be a little bit easier to get in that position. Well, I'm going to say this. The, the die cut on your, your punches mm -hmm. are very, very good. Oh, good. This one just popped right out. I didn't even have to put any pressure to it. Yeah. So uh, what we have here is our different levels, yes? Yeah, so as you get further into the uh, start box, you'll see that there's different levels. Now the clouds mm -hmm. and the punch discs there for the aircraft uh, part skill three, you mm -hmm. spin it over and you'll see you'll also get the uh, twos, fours and fives yep. and barrage, barrage balloons. Of because course. because why not? Exactly. If you're over our territory, you're going to encounter the balloons to <laughs> avoid certain areas, force bombers around. Mm -hmm. And you get two sheets of these. Two sheets of clouds. Obviously, you've got enough on there for one squadron of six. Yep. Call them squadrons just to uh, be easy. It's not necessarily the correct term for a, mm. a group of six aircraft. Some blue in different numbers. Yeah. But, and then uh, we have a, another sheet here. Aha. I've and of course, yeah, once you've got through two of those, you then get onto the important one with yeah that it's got some bombers on yeah again you've got the dornier on one side and the blender on the other or in that yep. case the dornier there uh damage markers damage markers they're called boom jits in this game <laughs> when we play the game you'll see how they work but essentially yeah. the idea is to get more give more of those boom jits to your enemy mm -hmm. and he's got aircraft oh i see so if you can make one crash as well does that you, bring the total down? If you can hit somebody, you put a boom chit on, and if they crash out, and that's another boom chit. Okay. Uh, does it also bring down the total needed? No. To no. actually finish uh, the game? Potentially, yes, because, of course, you've got one less aircraft on the airfield, on the yeah. battlefield, and you, you've got more boom chits that put on you. Okay, that's going to make this a pretty quick game. So if you're playing with, a, if you're playing with say, four aircraft in, say, a couple of elements aside, mm -hmm. you could probably have a game in under a half an hour. Wow. Potentially less, uh, because of course, if you shoot one aircraft down and get a couple of hits, you've got more than yeah, you've got left on the table. Getting there, okay. So we've got the boom jets. Uh, activation tokens, I'm guessing the wings. Yeah, these are probably the most important thing. They're yeah. called zoom chits in okay. the game, and because you can change levels by being forced to change a level, mm -hmm. uh, and the way the system works with going through advantage aircraft first, then neutral, then disadvantage, mm. you need to remember which aircraft have actually been. Okay, okay. Because yeah, so I assume cheapos. you can't go f during your turn, okay, I'm advantaged, I'm going to spend my advantage, Become go to neutral. normal, and then activate again. No. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, what else do we have here? What's the protractor for? Uh, that's a nice little caliper so that you can measure your 45 degree turn. Ah, now, nice. most experienced gamers, we know roughly what 45 degrees, I hope, is. Yep. Uh, and depending on the ruler you're using, you, you can use that as your, your chip. You just line up the arrow mm -hmm. with the front of the uh, aircraft arrow yeah. and then turn whichever side you're going. I see. Uh, these? High cover. High cover, okay. Which, in a game terms, allows you to put an element off table mm -hmm. and that chit represents that element up high, I see. looking for the opportunity to pounce. I see. Okay, we then have a uh, range for shooting. Yep, range ruler. And then uh, your movement inches. ruler. And the movement ruler, yes. And I think, is that everybody? I think that's that's pretty everything. much it. Nice and simple. Yeah, and then... What you have to use the quick reference guide, I suppose. Yeah, we've uh, got, ah, I love the fact that you put two of these in. Yep, so many games only put one quick reference sheet in whenever it's, it's a two-player game. Two-player game, and you can see here, nice and clear, what the routine would be. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side... Just a recap to say exactly what... Uh, actions are mm. uh, to reinforce how you move how you shoot this is a it's wonderful really start set Thank you. the the layout is absolutely perfect for for getting someone into the game these are always gold to me whenever i'm yeah, learning exactly. a new game yeah because if i get confused or lost it's just like okay did i do that did i do that did i do yeah. that and then you're good again yeah uh 
It's, Fantastic set. It's Andy Chambers feels like it's the simplest and best game he's done. Mm-hmm. So uh, from Andy, that's saying a huge thing. Well, the amount of games that he's been involved with. Andy is one of the the true old guard of the industry. He has been there for a long, and not just long with board games, with uh, computer game systems, oh, yeah. in yeah. a variety of formats. And uh, yeah, he's, he knows his stuff. And this is a simple, very easy to pick up game. Yeah. But I've experienced uh, endless hours of trying to shoot him down. <laughs> uh, yeah, game designer perks of knowing the game, I guess. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Game you, designers come in here all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. I demand Andy Chambers here right now for a game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you should, because he, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve. Uh-huh. And uh, especially when you bring in the cards. Yes. Uh, trying to become a master at this mm. could t- be a little bit of a challenge with some, mm. some of the yeah, different squadron types. It's those layers of tactical depth that you're fit yeah. to add in. Because, I mean, like, uh, there are other things that you can add to this box. Yes. So yeah. this is just your starter force to get you in and playing. So you get your six Actually, Spitfires, your spit, six measures. Yeah, so you've got your Mark 1 uh, mm. slash 2 uh, Spitfire. And your BF one hundred and nine E yes. uh, variant, um, and we've got others to come. Yeah, well, uh, I tell you what, we'll we'll save those for another video. Yes, we will. So, uh, <laughs> everybody, get your comments in below. What do you think of Blood Red Skies? Are you looking forward to getting some World War Two fighter action on the go? Let us know in the comments. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.